believe usually go together. Faith and patience also go together. The writer would say in Hebrews, be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And then down to Hebrews chapter 10. Listen to what the writer says beginning in verse 36. For though you have need of endurance, or for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Now listen to that. You have need of endurance, of patience, of patience affecting a maturity in your life. Why? So that after you have done God's will, you'll receive the promise. That, that's written right to Abraham, okay? He has need to endure and do the will of God, and so do you and so do I. God's will may be inconvenient. It may be incompatible with the world's plans. It may pragmatically not seem to be making sense right now, but the mature spiritual believer will endure. We endure because we know that the end of doing God's will is a reward. There's a blessing there. And we desire that greatly. Immature believers are always impatient. But mature believers are patient. Isaiah said, He that believeth shall not make haste, shall trust in God. Why does God want to make us patient? What's the purpose of it? Well, God wants to make us patient because that's the key to every other blessing. It's patience. You know, the little child who does not learn patience will not learn much of anything else. Uh, the, the child who does not learn to be patient will not be able to learn much else in life, academically, emotionally, physically. Patience is always the key, and it's the key to every other blessing spiritually. When the believer learns to wait on the Lord, then God can do great things for him. When the believer learns to patiently wait on God, that's when God does great things in that person's life. Abraham ran ahead of the Lord. He married Hagar, and he brought great sorrow into his home as a result of that. Moses ran ahead of God. He murdered a man, and he had to spend 40 years with the sheep to learn patience. Peter almost killed a man because of his impatience back in John 18. You see, patience brings about the opportunity for God to mature his blessings into our life, to unfold them into our life. And the only way the Lord can develop patience and character is through trials. That's the only way Patience, which, as I said, is the key to every other blessing. The only way the Lord can develop patience and character in our lives is through the trials. It's only through promising Abraham a son that it would be decades before he saw. It's only through having him leave the Ur of the Chaldees and go to a land that he promised him, but that he was a sojourner in his entire life. It's only through that patience being developed that God, or, or through those trials, that patience can be developed in our life. Endurance, patience, can't be obtained by reading a book. It can't be obtained by listening to a sermon. Uh, it can't even be obtained by praying a prayer. Patience is something we must get after we go through the difficulties in life. Trust God and obey Him. That's how we learn patience. The result of trusting God and obeying Him in the difficulties of our life is patience and character. And knowing this, we can face these trials joyfully. James 1, 3, count it all joy when you encounter these trials. But we can only do that because 
we understand that God is at work in our lives. We know what trials will do in us. We know what these difficult tests we're going through will do for us. And we know that not only will it benefit us, but in the end it's also going to bring glory to God. And so we welcome these trials in our lives. We welcome this time where we're waiting patiently on God, knowing that it is working a character and a hope in our lives that it is maturing us. Now, how do we know this? Because we study the Bible. And my friends, the fact of patience being a key to blessings, of trials being God's method of bringing that maturity into our life, it explains why studying the Bible is so important for you why it helps you grow in patience. As we read about Abraham, as we read about Moses, as we read about even our Lord, we realize in reading and studying that God has purpose in trials. We see that these trials are not just circumstantial, but that they have God's hand written all over them, that God has a purpose in them, and that God fulfills His purposes as we trust Him. In fact, there's just no substitute. There is no substitute for an understanding mind. A mind that bathes itself in the study and appreciation of God's Word. A mind that is devoted to learning the character of God and the character of self and how God relates to us through study. If ever there's something that wasn't, shouldn't be optional, it would be the study of God's Word the study of the Bible. There's no substitute for understanding God's Word. Satan can defeat the ignorant believer. He can fool the ignorant believer. But he can't overcome the Christian who knows his Bible and understands the purposes of God. If you want victory, study. There's not a pill, there's not a sermon, there's not a tape, there's not a book that's going to give it to you. Study the Word of God yourself. And understand that the trials you're going through, God has control over. And that He's chastising you. Don't be like Sarai and Abram. And reinterpret God's Word, God's plan, God's purpose. Substitute their own practical ideas. Don't let the circumstance that presents itself in your life cause you to step aside from you know what is God's will for you. But rather have patience and know that this very lack of God completing His promise right now is, is not God forgetting you, but it's God vitally at work in your life. You wanted to have this happy home and family, but there's all these disruptions right now. There are some big gaps right now. There are some holes that you could drive a truck through right now. Your temptation is to that God is punishing you. But if you're a believer, no, God is training you. And understand that what you're going through right now is not the disdain of God, but it is God growing you to a more mature level. And see this, not as a, a, a sad to, thing to escape from, but as an opportunity to submit yourself to Him. And let the gap of time that seems to just continually grow between God's plan for your life and where you sit right now be seen as that time of testing and trial that God is rotting are bringing about to wrought in you that strong, mature, spiritual character that can learn to trust Him. Because, my friends, if He's spending time on you right now, if He's got your life disrupted, if your career plans didn't go A, B, C, but they went A, B, and then to the right, if your uh, college plans, your education plans, your your path in life is not going straight. Well, my friends, if you're a believer in God, 
understand that you have a heavenly Father that is purposefully intervening in your life right now to grow you to spiritual maturity. He is using this disruption, this trauma, this break, not to punish you. Remember, God will not do that. But He's using it to train you, to teach you, and to grow you. He never gave up on Abraham. He didn't just kick him and Sarai out in the desert. He didn't say, I'll go find somebody else. He didn't say, you guys messed up too much. You know what? God told Abram back in Genesis 12, at the beginning, what his plan and purpose was for Abram's life. And he reaffirmed it again and again and again. And he does so with you. He doesn't kick you to the curb because you dropped out. He doesn't kick you to the curb because you backslid and made a huge mistake in life and so now God's forgotten you. No. No, God is a loving Father. Read Hebrews 12. God is a God who deals with you as a father does with his child. And he is very, very patient. And he wants you to learn that patience as well. So today, take the difficulties in your life and see them as you've never seen them before. That's God's hand. That's God growing you, strengthening you. He has bigger plans for you. Plans where you're going to need to have a maturity like Abraham developed like Moses developed, like David developed, like our Lord demonstrated, like the disciples all grew into. God has big plans for you. See those plans at work. 